So there are lots, there are lots of lots of opportunities beyond school-based education for you to work in, um, hmm, if you so would in, like to. In, in terms of say working at a government school, yep. do you approach the schools or do they to refer to a database and then find you? I think you can. I think a lot of schools, especially ACT being a small jurisdiction. Um, most of the time, a lot of the time students say that on their PRAC, on their final PRAC, they got picked up by the school to teach and the school organised the rankings um, interview, the school organised yeah, all sorts of stuff. I mean. The school organises the permit to teach if you're very close to course completion. You've got 10 weeks to go and all that sort of stuff. But you have to have finished your final placement. But, but what if they don't do that? If they don't, That's I fine. You don't... Yeah, they they will only do that yeah, throughout private the independent the schools. School, I think any, other than getting picked up in that final placement, most do find a good contact in the last one and they picked up um, through that Department of Education database. Um, they probably only follow that protocol. They so might only be allowed to. Yeah, well, if you're in the in the general pool, but if you're in with secondaries, um, you have a, if you have a specialisation that's highly sought after. And I'm thinking of design and technology, um, but it could be languages, it could be all sorts of other specialisations where there are few of you who are qualified in the right way to teach those curriculum area, that curriculum area. That's when it becomes you're a little bit more important than your stock standard something or other teacher. Um, and maybe it's you that they want with your background. And the mature age um, students have got sometimes uh, not necessarily an advantage, but certainly they can bring on other things they do. So if you've got other things in your skill sets and your life experience you think will add value to your application, that's what you should be putting into your CVs and your letter of introduction, any e-portfolio you put together. You assemble that because you need a little bit of a cutting edge. Um, and especially if you're going to pitch yourself to a particular school where you know they have um, you know, a strength in a certain area or a deficit in a certain area. They don't have qualified teacher in visual arts. Um, but you are, and so you would like to work there. Um, so you need to kind of manage how that application will go. Um, and uh, it's up to them. I mean, they're the employers. We're just the training provider. Yeah, who, who is the actual employer? In a, in a government school, it is the directorate. No, the, the principal is the head of that school organisation. Oh, great, yep. Do you so want to drive that and show yeah, us where we... Which paragraph are you on? When individual, when individual oh. schools have the type of vacancy in there. at their site during the year. If you're not in a pre-service placement or don't have a current recruitment rate in which to consider for potential employment, please complete the expression of interest application. Oh, yeah. The there you go. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But you notice that yep. the first thing that they're talking about is register. Yeah. They get registered with TQI first. Yeah. And then that's the next. And then follow the about. steps. Yeah. Hmm. See, so it was an excellent question. Yeah, Most excellent question. No, I'll put that link up. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yep. Yeah. You've mentioned um, recruitment readings at Wickham School. What are those? Oh, so, no, that's all directorate stuff. That's right, yeah. That's just stuff that um, <laughs> it's the process. It's all part of the process. If you, you think about applying for any job, you will put in your application, you'll be going on a list. Then they'll select from that list the people they want to interview, so a, a short list. Um, and then that short list, they do rank uh, against metrics, you know, the numbered descriptors, like a rubric, and you get kind of a mark out of the end. Uh, I don't that know what the mark is. our final placement, right? It's uh, timed after your final placement. There's no point in trying to do that sort of process before your final placement. It has to be a successful placement. I'm not exactly sure of the timings. Um, it depends on the time of year. Um, and they do it. In schools yeah, there's yeah. a whole lot of flexibility that the direct our small jurisdiction can do because it is small, and they've changed that mode over the last few years. So they're probably further refining that mode.
And so I'd strongly... Can you have a point, hold on, on that? On a yeah, there's, there's, there's an email that came around from the Visa Union uh, last year that had been passed on to the directorate, mm. which basically said, if you are looking to teach an ACT school, fill out this questionnaire and then you can approach the principal and okay. see the yeah. placement for arrangements. For okay, students. yeah. As David pointed out, that's which part was in that middle bit there somewhere. In there in some way. Yeah. yeah. In that middle bit, how to yeah. apply. How oh, to how to apply this middle yeah. section. And here. I think the other thing so yeah. have you guys have all got some more placement to go or some of you if, if, you've in got, there. if, if you have, if yeah. you have, it would be worthwhile talking yeah. specifically to the principal yeah. at that school just to get clarification of how that happens. Because I know that ratings interviews are conducted mm -hmm. at some schools and not at others. So yeah, uh, that I can't answer. They, Sorry. They, they interview you in some <laughs> yeah. form, to, to, you know, like any job interview. Just I gather. A, yeah. yeah, it's just a job interview. So that's yeah, yeah. 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 So it's so a stand. There's standard the questions. Schools. A standard. Well, that's that. That's my understanding is that some schools will do the interview there, but yeah. but they had a process that they I think they only brought in last year mm. where um, the, the school there, there are only certain people who could who are appropriately mm. trained, trained to be on the panel, yeah. and some schools mm. said, yeah, we're prepared to you know do the training and be on the mm. panels, and other schools didn't, and so sometimes people mm. you know they were at school X, but the actual interviews were going to happen yeah. over at school Y, so they would go to there. And so that's, <coughs> yeah. that's mm. like your job interview. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. And so as you can <coughs> as you can probably sense now, it's a process that's in evolution. So it's it's changing. It changes year to year, but that's because no. The directorate has changed over the last couple of years as well in the way they organizational structure, refining processes. So it's up to you to keep abreast of those things by going to their website. So we're coming back to the same thing. We'll do the training for you. <laughs> We'll uh, help you get to course completion, then we'll help you get to graduation, and then after that, it's your job. But I, I yep. think David does make a good point that um, the best thing to do, particularly if you do have a placement still to come, yeah. um, I mean, we, um, as much information as our academic staff have, we aren't teaching the schools at the moment with mm. those changes coming through. Yeah. So someone there would be the best thing so, to ask. Yeah. Yeah, so, so the gentleman up the back, your advice is probably more recent than ours, so. Yeah. 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 And that yeah. is how rapidly yeah. things are changing in yeah. general anyway. Yeah. Um, so it is difficult for us to do that again. Then we're going to still take it into schools. Mm. So um, that current knowledge in schools at the moment is what we need to be relying on. And it struck me just in that couple of seconds looking at that, that essentially what you're applying for is a job in the ACT public service. Yeah, you are. You know, yes, so because it is. It's yeah. part of that it whole really public service broad. process. Yeah. So yeah. 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 It just happens that it... Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you can yeah. Yeah. And for those who are looking at the code of um, practice, teachers professional code of practice, um, you'll know that you are an ACT public servant in the same way if you're employed in a government school or do volunteer work in a government school. Yeah. You fall under the same code. Yeah, yeah, that's right, because that, as David said, the teachers, and I know this because our clinical teaching specialists have, um, were from government schools last year and some of them are still with us, and some of them were on those panels being trained and then working in on those panel assessments. Yeah. So, and then uh, mm. just another kind of weird question. Um, so the teachers at my kids' school get reassigned to a new school every now and then. That's rotation. They have no choice. No, that's right. It's called rotation and it's about every, school? yes, it's every five years roughly. Yeah, now this is where if you're a discipline specialist and your school principal needs you, wants you to stay on, they can extend that rotation for one rotation mostly, but not more than that. Yeah. Five years, yeah. It used to be three years and then before that there was none and you had to wait for somebody to die or retire to get into a college. When I started there you had to wait and that was literally how, we framed, how it was framed. We framed it because it was stuck. So you are no longer stuck, which is quite good. Uh, 
Well, if you're know. working, if you if you're working in Quinby, and sorry, David, you have to be yeah. registered with New South Wales. Yeah. And yeah. yes, then. Yeah, uh, I don't know about this cycling process, oh, no. but the, when the, you, yeah. At least the last time I spoke to people in New South Wales, they don't have this. Okay. It's only the, the rotation. It's a very ACT thing, this rotational mm. sort of process. Probably Other for that first reason that I gave. <laughs> because one it's of the things, when you think worse. about it, it is yeah. quite possible to do it, and it can work well in the yeah. ACT, yeah. because yeah. You, yeah. Could, you could live in Lynham or something like that, mm. and you could quite happily travel down to Gordon or something like that, or up to Gangas, yeah. it's a bit of a drive, but it's possible. It's, yeah. Whereas in New South Wales, if you lived in yeah. Sydney, and you were, you were sent to Moree or something, something like oh, that. You yeah. can't commute Or even day. one <laughs> yeah. suburb in Sydney to another <coughs> suburb in Sydney, like really east to west, you would spend two hours driving exactly. or one hour driving yeah. or in public transport each way. So here we're blessed with a small, geographically small jurisdiction, but that means there's ease of transport. So that rotation, that notion of rotation keeps teachers fresh, keeps the schools fresh. There's actually a really good logic in it. Um, the three year rotation they started with was too quick. You could never get traction and feel settled and develop programs in a school, but the five-year five year rotation prospect gives you a bit more time. You can see your sevens out to your tens. You know, you can see that progression, so it's healthier rotation time. Um, so it's not a bad thing; it's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I have another question. With that, so. <laughs> so after you graduate. Mm -hmm. um, 